Hey, Justin, I saw you sent me another email while I was prepping for the lecture. Um, oh, no. <laughs> it breaks your entire code. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, I can hear you. Just have to use headphones. I couldn't hear you through my computer for some reason, so I guess I'll use headphones today. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess I was confused because I was trying to do, I was trying to like add that parameter so I could have, you know, so I could just switch back and forth between MTU sizes for the packages. And okay. I thought that it might be easier in the long run to do it that way. Um, but what I did was I just defined that MTU up in the interface is that where you are heading? Like the uh, interface class, and then you have uh, the initializer self dot Q, uh, and then self dot MTU. Yeah, let me pull this. Let me pull this up so I can look at the uh, mm -hmm. the right branch here. Data plane, data plane, data plane. Okay. Uh, so the, if we look at, I think, simulation.py, the MTU is defined when you add a link. Okay. Let's see. In simulation. Yeah. So you got link layer, add link, and then you have 50, and then you have link layer 30, right? Yeah. Okay. So. I guess mine was just doing it a little different. Uh, I'll come to your office hours today and kind of show you what what I was thinking because I wasn't really using the those link layers to, well, I guess I oh, was I when I was running the simulation, but what I sent you in the code uh, uh -huh. was the packet length. So if the packet length was uh, larger than 40, then I would go into a while loop and do some, uh, fragmenting. Right. Yeah, that's uh, so that's for network one. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Okay. You just don't. I mean, work. it worked. So. Yay. <laughs> I, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So what you need to do is uh, for network one, you, you, instead of passing the parameter, mm -hmm. um, UDT send no can get the MTU from the interface. Yeah, so, so that's exactly what I changed. So I took that right. parameter out and then I called the interface uh, class inside of there instead of doing a uh, separate parameter. Great. Okay. And I'll still come, because I still kind of want to talk to you about network two and three uh, a little bit. So I'll still come by your office hours later. Sounds good. Did you schedule an appointment? Uh, no, I didn't. I'll do Please that. Do. Please do. Okay. Um, so it doesn't fill up. Um, yeah, and I changed the appointment stuff. It was, I had it set so that you have to schedule the appointment like one day before. It was kind of the default. And then I had people just show up randomly to my office hours saying they couldn't schedule. So we figured it out. So you Perfect. can schedule like up to a minute before, which may be a little <laughs> risky, but. That's kind of nice. But uh, I'll see it and we'll and we'll be there. <laughs> and do I schedule on the D2L website? I guess I'm the, uh, the person that always just shows up randomly. Yeah, there's a on my homepage there's a link to the schedule. Okay. Great. All right. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um so if you guys are here, uh type in present. I see you guys a lot of people doing that already. So just um if you forgot, do that. All right. Um, questions? Anybody? Anything? Anything that's left over? Uh, thanks for being. I want to say thank you for being accommodating about the recorded lectures. I'm I'm actually really happy to to be back in the synchronous mode. I was not very happy with my. My basement flooding instead of lecturing you guys. 
How's the basement doing? It is not flooded anymore. That's um, good. Basically, my my uh, washer just like you know dumped water to the drain like it should, and it all just like backed up. Not just in the basement, including like the apartments. It was just like a full on full on flood. Um, yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Apparently, roots in pipes are a thing in Bozeman. Who knew? Um, so anyway, that's dealt with. All right. Um, so uh, today I'll introduce uh, the next programming assignment, uh, which is on the control plane and routing. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, cool. Um, so we want this. Okay, great. So this is the control plane uh, branch in the programming assignments um, repository. And what we'll be doing in this programming assignment is um, designing a, a control packet, um, implementing the distance vector routing protocol, which we talked about a couple of weeks back. And then you guys will control routing in a network using linked costs, as opposed to using routing, like hard-coded uh, routing tables explicitly. Okay, so this is closer to how um, ISPs um, or autonomous systems would control um, routing. Okay, so what we're starting with is network layer and data link layer and simulation PY kind of like before. Um, they are a little bit different, so I'll go over the differences. Um, and what we're starting with is a more complex network with um, these interfaces linking the routers and hosts. Now, <clears throat> the major change here is that the interfaces are bi-directional. Um, they have two queues instead of one. Um, it's a pretty small change. Uh, anyway, it's a pretty easy change, but there it is. Um, okay, and so we do a simulation. Uh, hosts generate traffic, routers forward the traffic between interfaces, um, and then links connect interfaces between the different nodes. Um, there is a, a video lecture recorded from last year um, that kind of explains it basically does what I'm doing right now. So if you want to kind of go back there and uh, get some more details, um, there's a link to it. Uh, we can check it out. Okay, um, so we start this simulation using simulation py, just like in the in the previous assignment. And here's what we'll have to um, do. So actually, let me jump into the code and show you what the simulation is doing because it's a little bit different. Okay, so. What we have here is the simulation, uh, the simulation file, and we're going to set up two hosts, um, and we're going to set up two routers, router A and router B, which corresponds to um, this network. All right, and then um, what we're going to do is to add links between those um, uh, entities. And we're going to say what interfaces are used to link these things. Okay, so if you look at this picture, you have host interface zero connects to routers, router A's interface zero. Okay, and so that's what's represented here. That's what is represented here. Um, router A interface one collect, connects to router B's interface zero. Okay, so we have router A interface one, router B interface zero and then one to zero, one to zero. Okay, so that's the network setup. Now, what is different about this is we're not, eventually we're not going to be passing routing tables explicitly into these routers. Instead, we'll be passing this cost dictionary to each router, okay? And what the cost dictionary does is it basically specifies the costs of the interfaces. So these are the routing costs um, we talked about earlier. You can kind of define them to be whatever you want, or, or you, know, you can consider them to be latencies. Latencies, you can consider them to be bandwidth. You can consider them to be something else. Um, for the purpose of the routing algorithm, these are just numbers. So what we have here is uh, one such table for router A, and we're saying that the that to reach host one on interface zero is cost one. And so here you have kind of the structure of it, which is neighbor, 
which is host one, interface zero, and cost one. Right? So it's kind of a dictionary of dictionaries, which corresponds to this. So from router A to reach host one, you go through interface zero, and we're going to define the cost as one. Okay? We're going to also define how to reach router B, which is through interface one at cost one. Okay, so through interface one at cost one, the cost you're coming up with out of thin air on your own. Okay, and so these interfaces need to match uh, these interfaces that you're setting up here. Otherwise, this is not going to make any sense. Okay, so this is the actual connectivity. This is the description of the connectivity that's used in routing. To build to build the routing tables, okay, and so we can set up the same cost structure for router B, where it can reach host two through interface one, and it can reach router A through interface zero. And arbitrarily, we're going to say that it's more expensive to reach host two through interface one and assign the cost of three. And so at this point, we have a configured network. Questions. <clears throat> okay, so far so good. All right, so let's see what we need to do. So the is to uh, print a routing table, and that's your first task. So the routing table is organized as follows. This is from router A. Okay, so this is a table printed by router A. And it says that the cost of reaching these destinations from router A is one. Uh, so it takes you know the routing cost of one to reach host one, right? And that basically just comes of comes out of these uh, comes out of this number. Okay. The cost of reaching host two is four. And that needs to be kind of computed as your routing algorithm converges. Okay, the cost of reaching router A is zero because that's uh, we are at, are at that router, and the cost of routing of router of reaching router B is one. And router A will also learn that uh, from the perspective of router B, okay, the cost of reaching H one is two, H two is three, reaching R A is one, and reaching R B is zero. So this is the final table for this network uh, from the point of view of router A. Once the once the routing algorithm converges, so your first task is to basically print the routing table at each router or at a router uh, in this format. Okay, initially, your values here will be different, right? And this is important because without having a good view of the routing table at each router. It's going to be very difficult for you to to debug your um, your distance vector routing protocol, and so this is kind of just I'm making you guys do this so that uh, you don't lose your sanity later. Uh, questions about the format of the routing table? <clears throat> uh, I get the format. I'm just. I suppose I really just have questions about how to implement a pretty printing because I've never had to do that before. How to imp implement printing? Uh, yeah, of that style. I normally just use a text-based interface that I just print out to a terminal without much. <laughs> right. I, and I've never been very good at graphical, well, anything. ASCII art? <laughs> yeah. So you can look up these characters, right? Each of these is a character, right? You can when you kind of select it, you can see that. Uh, I don't, I don't care if you use these, these, this fancy format um, of ASCII art. I mean, you can look it up; it's kind of fun. Um, but what I do want you to do is to print it in the matrix form. Okay, that is more doable. <laughs> yeah. 
So you need a, you know, you need a function that loops through the dictionary that is your routing table and prints stuff out in this, in this, in this way. It just has to be a matrix. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be <clears throat> fancy. That's fine. I can do a matrix. I just, I have no experience with ASCII art at all whatsoever. Solid. Uh, okay, cool. Good question. All right, so let's let's go back into our simulation and see what else is happening here. So we set up this network. Um, start all the objects, start the threads. It's all good. Um, and now here's what happens. So the simulation progresses in stages. Um, the first thing that that happens once everything starts is that some router, we'll call this router A, will send a routing update. Okay. Now. For the distance vector protocol to do anything, someone has to start with an update. And once one person sends an update, other people get it, they update their routing tables, and then as, as a re result of that, they send out more routing updates and, a version, and eventually the process converges to, um, to a distributed routing state. So to trigger this process, someone needs to send a routing update, and that's what we're doing here. We're arbitrarily picking router A to do this. Okay, so after this update is sent, the other routers will, the other router or the other routers will talk to each other, and we need to set up some simulation time for those to, for for those messages to be transmitted. Okay, after that, the tables have converged. Okay, and what you can do is print the routing tables uh, for each router. Okay, so that's sort of the first stage of simulation that happens. Now we assume that we have these converged routing tables and we can go ahead and do start doing forwarding. And so we're going to send a message from host one to host two and then allow that message to be delivered through the network. These two things could be happening simultaneously. We're going to make our life easy but saying first we're going to get the routing tables to converge and then we're going to send some traffic through this network. Okay? And then everything stops. So Let's look at the network. Um, the first thing we'll notice is that we're going to initialize, where's our router? Okay. We're going to initialize our routers. Okay, this happens here when we create a new router object and we pass the cost matrix into them. Okay. So the routers take this cost matrix, this dictionary, Okay, and set up the routing tables. Okay, so I'm, I'm leaving a to-do for you guys here to do this. Okay, so the, the structure of the cost table is neighbor, interface, cost. Okay, the structure of the routing table is destination, router, cost. Okay, which basically corresponds to this, okay, which is destination, router, and then cost. Okay, So you need to take this, co this uh, cost dictionary and convert it into the initial routing table. Right? So initially, what we know, for example, from router A, is the cost of reaching its neighbors, which is host 1 and router B. So when you set up this, this table, you'll have RA, you'll have all the destinations or uh, known destinations at this point, right? Which will be host one and router B, I guess, and router A, okay? Um, if, if you want, you can, you can already assume there's H2 in here. It's up to you. Eventually you can discover that there's, you know, more, des more than one destination in this network. Um, and so you would set up the, you would know the cost from, uh, RA to host one, which is one, and from RA to RB, which is one, and from RA to RA, which is zero. Okay, so you initially know these three values. Everything else would be blank. Okay. So you set up this routing table, and now you are able, after you do this, you can, after you do this in here, you can then 
in here print routes. Now this would actually print something. What's happening right now when we run the simulation is we start all the uh, objects, we start all the links. Um, in here, we can print routes for each router, okay? And it basically just prints the empty dictionary, okay? Because this is not implemented. Um, all right, so that's kind of the first part. Right, so we, yeah, questions? No, okay. So I do have a question. Do we get yeah, to sure. choose? Do we, you said we get to choose the um, costs inside, mm -hmm. of the, inside of this table here? Mm -hmm. uh, is it going to be the same for RB? You said that RB is not initially uh, known. Are we going to choose the cost for that router as well? H H two is not initially known. Two two me, router yeah. uh, two router A. Okay. So router oh. A knows of H one and router B. Router right. B knows of H two and router A. When yeah. router B says, "Hey, my cost of reaching H two is three, and says that to router A, now router A says, "Oh, looks like there's another destination in this network that we can that." you know that i'm learning from router b and so now it can add it to its table okay cool thank you yep <clears throat> okay so once we have this initial routing table set up now we need to go through the routing process of being able to send routes and update routes the first send routes message happens here, as I mentioned, when we start the writing process, when we force A to send routes. Okay, so this is what's happening here. We have in the router uh, a send routes option, which is what you need to do. Okay? Now, to send routes, you need to use a control packet. And okay? so we have a network packet. Um, and now network packets have two types of control and data. And so right now I'm sending a routing table that is basically nothing, right? This isn't meaningful. So you need to come up with a format of sending a routing, your routing table to your neighboring router, okay? In a control packet. Now, going up to the packet class, okay? We have two elements in it. We have destination and protocol. Okay, so when you convert a packet to bytes or from bytes, okay, you're going to basically mark in that packet whether or not it's a data packet or a control packet. Okay, and same thing here, when you convert it from bytes, uh, we will set the, the protocol string variable to either data or control, allowing you to differentiate between the two. Okay. So okay, so we end up we end up sending routes. Now those routes get forwarded from one router to another. Okay. So basically putting it on on those routes onto you're creating a packet and then putting it on an interface or all the interfaces to all the neighbors that are routers. Okay. And now we're putting this onto an interface and we need to say that it's the out interface. The interfaces are bidirectional, so when we want to send something, we always put it to the out interface. Okay, now that packet is going to be forwarded by the, by the link layer, which isn't interesting here, just forwards data as before. And now that packet will arrive at a router, okay, which will process queues. Okay, so that's the thing. That's the thing that routers do. It will go through the queues on the in interface. Okay, so if you send something, you put it on the out interface, the, the link layer will move it into the in interface of the receiver. And now, based on the type of the packet, you need to check if it's a data packet or a control packet. If it's a data packet, that packet will go into forward packets as in the previous assignment, where we you know route the packet from one uh, interface to another. But if it's a control packet, it means that we sent out a routing update. And so that will be processed by, by update routes. 
Okay, so we go to update routes. Okay, and this is where you're doing the distance vector thing, the Bellman Ford equation, to update your routing table based on the announcement of uh, that you get from a neighbor, which gets us through send routes and then update routes. Okay, so at this point in the simulation. Someone sent routes, we go through rounds of send route and update routes, and eventually this finishes after some time. And at that point, we can print out the converged routing tables at each router. Questions? Um, I had a non-technical question, just kind of looking at the instructions of the assignment. It says yeah. to complete the assignment in pairs. Is that so, applicable or, or can we still do as the previous assignments where we- Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will update this text. Yep, absolutely. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, then moving on. Okay, so once we have, once you guys establish routing tables, okay, now you can update forward packets to forward data instead of always on interface one, okay? You can now use routing tables to forward the packet. So as in the previous assignment, The forward packet, the forwarding initially always uses interface one to forward data, okay? which basically in terms of this network will mean that from router A, data will go in this direction and from router B, it will go in this direction. But if host two tries to send the packet to router B, router B will now say, oh, okay, all the data gets forwarded out interface one. And so we'll go back to host two. Okay? So we need, so we need routing tables. So now that we have the routing tables, you can implement lookup into the routing tables to figure out how to forward, which interface to use to forward data for a particular destination. So when router B gets, where's my routing table? Okay. When router A gets a packet for host two, okay, it will say, okay, I can reach, uh, host two at the cost of four. My possible next hops are router A and router B, okay? So I can forward data to router B and I can check that router B can reach host two at the cost of three, okay? So basically given some, some set of, some choice of routers, okay? Well, router A doesn't really, is not really an option because we are router A, okay? We can look at what is the cost of forwarding data through router B, which is, one plus three, which is four. Well, we already know this, but now we can basically choose uh, a path through router B and forward it, uh, forward our packet to router B on the interface that's connected to that router. Okay. Similarly, when router B gets a message from host two to host one, router B would now not automatically forward data on interface one, but it will look into its routing table to see you know, what is the least cost of forwarding data to host one? All right, so that gets us to routing, actually using the routing tables. And then you will modify the simulation PY to send the data from host two to host one and, you know, use the routing tables for the data to be delivered. Questions? Okay, so that's um, sort of part, I don't know, A, which is uh, like bulk of the work, okay? To finish this, um, what we'll do is once you have this, this stuff working, routing working on the simple topology, we'll make things more interesting by setting up a more complex topology. So you need to change simulation to have more routers. Basically you add two more routers 
and connect them like this. Okay. When you create all these interfaces, you will also need to update the cost dictionary that you pass to each router. And you will, con you will set the cost structures to be such that the, the data forwarded from host one to host two will forward one, will be forwarded on one path. And the reverse data from host two to host one will be forwarded on another path. And so you can control this routing just using uh, in interface costs. Right. So the task here, once you have, you know, everything else up, up through here working, is you set up a larger network and set up the costs on the interfaces or on the links, so that traffic goes over, you know, here in one direction and here in the other direction. And then I have two bonus uh, problems if you guys are interested in those, but. Um, which is basically to use uh, IP addressing and to use uh, IP multicast um, if you have three hosts. And so you can basically use routing uh, to a multicast address uh, and multiple hosts. All right, that I think wraps up the overview of the assignment. Um, do you guys have any questions, concerns? So this one is um, maybe a little bit harder than the than the last one. It's not too bad. Um, I would say get this part right. This will make your job a lot easier. Um, probably the easiest thing to send around is the actual dictionary. So so data for this is a dictionary. When you send a when you do a send routes. You can send a serialized dictionary using pickle. That's what I would suggest, uh, which makes it easier to receive that dictionary and update routes. Probably the hardest thing here in this assignment is to do update routes correctly using Bellman Ford. But the book talk, the book talks about it extensively. And then when you're doing packet forward, you need to kind of walk through this table to find a the least cost route. This will be pretty easy to do here. This will be a little bit harder to do here. Well, it's really the same, the same algorithm, but here you have a choice of routes. And so you need to kind of look at two different routes, two different possibilities, because here each route only has one router neighbor, but in this situation, router A has router B and router C. So you need to compute the cost of routes through router B and through router C, and then choose, choose one of those. And that's it. It's pretty, uh, I think it's pretty satisfying because when you get, oh, wait, where am I? Um, I think it's pretty satisfying because once you have these routers, these routing done, once you set the costs, you can see the routers converge to a routing state and then basically forward packets based on that, um, which I don't know, to me is kind of magical. So uh, I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, Anything else? Any other last minute questions? So with the Bellman Ford uh, equation there, are we allowed to use outside resources like the book and um, like Stack Overflow and stuff like that to help us construct that algorithm? Or are we supposed to struggle and well, implement that? Sure. The only thing you can do is yank solutions from previous years. Right. OK. Or from each other, but that's obvious. Goes without saying. Yep. All right. Well, that uh, is short and sweet for today. Um, I hope to see you guys in office hours today. We can talk about any of the programming assignments or anything else. And if you want a one on one session for me to look at your code specifically, uh, please sign up for a, a meeting slot later today. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, I signed up for about five.
540, 530, something like that. So um, if I could show you my code and kind of double check and make sure I'm doing things right later on, that'd awesome. be great. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, okay. thank you. Appreciate it. Cool. We'll see you then. Yep. See you a little bit later. Bye.